Howdy. So I said in the last live coding that I would take some time and document the code and prepare a video showing just an overview of kind of where the project is because we've put I've put nine episodes in which I think is about 14-ish hours of work and there have been a couple of pull requests from a bunch of different people so I think it's it's nice just to take a breath and see where we are and talk about like how things are organized and a plan for the future. So this should be a nice intro for anyone who hasn't seen the previous nine videos. And we'll just kind of take you through what the project looks like. Um, so the gameplay right now is I can go around with WASD. I can press space to pick up items and they'll appear in my inventory. I can click over here to craft things. Uh, like I could make a shovel. In the bottom right, I can have an item in my hand, and I can equip, say, the shovel, but I can't equip the flint because it's not a tool. And if I have the axe in my hand, or if I, actually, if I have the shovel in my hand, I can't chop down these trees, but if I use the axe, I can get myself some wood, and grab some grass, and then I can place some campfires using the wood and grass, and you'll see it's coming out of my inventory every time I craft it. And now there's no more trees in the world, so I'll never be able to make another campfire. And the twigs and grass, as you can see, grow back after some time, but the trees never do. And I don't think, no, we don't have the ability to, to, to um, dig up stumps yet. So that's kind of what the gameplay looks like. So let's jump into some of the code. Um... So first off, we use Bevy Asset Loader. Let me actually clean this up while I'm here. Um, oh, good grief. I've made it worse. This is what happens when I try to live clean. Uh, let's see if I can format. That's all I wanted to do. So the Bevy Asset Loader plugin here uh, looks for these image assets, and it will automatically handle the loading of everything we specify, which right now is just Bevy Survival Sprites, which was a sprite sheet contributed by someone in the community by the name of Sal. As you can see, they have a, uh, signed the artwork, and this is all the art we have in game right now. Some of it's currently not in use, but I'm sure it all will be soon. And then after those are loaded and are ready to be used, we go to main. And I guess this is a good time to talk about why we need this. So in our assets plugin, we create this global resource called graphics, which is the meat of all of our graphics. Here it is. And this takes the handle to the texture atlas, um, the index into that atlas for the player and the UI box, because those are kind of common. They probably don't need to be here. And then a map that goes from world objects to the texture atlas sprite associated with them and a second map from world objects to an image. And that's because the UI library we use can't render texture atlas sprites into the UI. So we have this hacky workaround function, which takes every texture atlas sprite and just pushes the data into a new image and adds that. So all of our images are copied twice, but it's one sprite sheet and it's a workaround. And hopefully the UI libraries will fix that soon graphics are described in this graphics description, which we load from a RON file, which says where everything is on the sprite sheet. So we can see that item grass is positioned. Let me open up the graphics again. It's positioned here, or I guess grass would be the item form, would be that sprite. And that is, oh good grief, position 320 and it's a 16 by 16 sprite. And this way we can specify objects of all different kinds of sizes, and we can even put the anchor using the anchoring system in Bevy to appropriately lay them out. So back in assets, the reason why we use the asset loader is once all of these are loaded, we go through all the image assets and we read our sprite descriptions. And then we loop over them, and for every world object, we report that we found a description for its graphics, and we set up the um, texture atlas sprite, add it to the 
uh, texture atlas and then insert it into our map. And at the end, we insert the resource that will contain this map. And this makes it very easy later on in the game, as we'll see, to not have to actually worry about the nitty gritty of where sprites are and what sprite goes with which object. So I guess the next thing that we'll get then is what is a world object? I can just go to definition on this. And we see we have all of our world objects, which are trees, saplings, grass, uh, the campfires. And we also can have items as world objects. And these, everything in this enum can be like placed in the world. So like you probably see Flint is able just to be placed on the ground in our starting game. And you can pick it up because items, all item types can be placed in the world. And then we have an enum for item types, which is everything that can be in the player's inventory. So all of your tools and then um, like the chopped version of wood, grass, and twigs. And then finally we have tools, which right now are just an ax and a shovel. And we have some helper functions to spawn those in. And at the end here we have our giant function way down here. Which, can, which spawns in our test world, our test map. We also have the functions to handle object regrowth. So if anything has a growth timer on it, it'll tick and then we can call grow on it. And grow, right now I don't actually like how this is architectured, but we can say what stuff grows into. And it'd be nice if that was also loaded from a config file and was more, um, I guess, safe. If you try to grow right now, it will just kind of silently fail. It would be nice also to have an error here. And we do have this nice error library or file that somebody wrote up for us that we don't actually use as much as we could. So this project, I should have said at the beginning, is very open to pull requests. Many people have contributed to it. And part of why I'm making this video is just to try to make it more approachable to people who want to start contributing and are looking for a nice, I'm very laid back with the um, accepting pull request on this project. It's very much a stone soup of everyone just throws stuff in and we see if a game is emerges out the other side. So if you're looking for a project you want to contribute to, I'm hoping this is a approachable one, especially after this video. Um, but I think that gets me through most of assets. So you see, uh, there's one final thing at the end of, not assets, it was items, which just handles um, keeping the sprite update graphics here. Checks every time you change the world object on an item, it will update its sprite, so you don't have to worry at all about graphics. If you want to change a twig into a, a piece of grass, you can just change the type, and that makes it very easy to use the inspector to work with. Uh, the next interesting thing, I guess, would be crafting. In crafting, we use a crafting book file here, which is a RON file, which contains the recipes for everything. Like an ax is made up out of a flint and a twig. And a campfire is made up of one wood, one grass. We need to represent this in game somehow, but it's, you know, it's a work in progress. And we have craft items, which we'll get back to, but when you click on them in the UI, we get the correct item to craft, we see if it's something that goes into your inventory or if it's something that spawns into the world. And then we check if you have the ingredients available and we remove the ingredients from your inventory. And then if it, we can add it to your inventory if you're allowed to have it or if it's something that goes into your inventory or we can set it up as your ghost if, like for the campfire that doesn't go into your inventory, you just place it into the world. We have the campfire graphics, which needs a lot of reworking, but basically we just set up, we have a hash map of campfires, of active fires, and then um, we have a system that extracts that resource and then prepares it. Right now you can only have 64 campfires because we struggled getting storage buffers working. And then the campfires are just rendered by a simple shader that draws the circle. So it'd be nice in the future, or relatively soon, to not have to... I keep closing out my windows. It'd be nice in the future to not need this active fires hash map because we're just double booking what a query for campfires would be. And I think I've tagged everywhere that it would need to be removed. 
So hopefully that would be a very quick fix if somebody's looking for something to do. Uh, we have the UI system, which is done in Kayak. We have an item widget, which has a button on it. And whenever you click on the button, it'll trigger the UI event specific for what that item is. So if it's in your inventory, it triggers a different event than if it's a crafting menu item. And that's what's caused, like, when you saw, when we wanted to craft, we could just click on the, let me rephrase all of this. In the crafting system, you saw that it was reading the UI events. This is where those come from. It's, you clicked on it when in the UI, and then that system can look it up in the book and see if you have the correct items to craft it. Here, it'd be nice to gray out items that you can't currently craft. Uh, which we used to have, but we don't have in the new UI system yet. And then we have a couple of things here to just read your inventory, your hand, and your recipes. And then over here in the main UI, we just create the different widgets for your recipes, hands, and inventory, and stylize them, and position them. And I think that's pretty much all that happens here. Oh, and here are the different kinds of UI events. Um, which is cool. Inventory is straightforward. This was one of the first things we did, so it needs a good bit of cleanup, but it's pretty safely wrapped over with these add, um, can add, remove functions. And you have a limited inventory space of, I think, seven items? You can have seven items here in, in your inventory, which is more than we even have in game right now. Um, and I think that actually sums it all up. The player is a very straightforward player. Um, there's a, a reader to see if you clicked on a tool in your inventory and place it in your hand. But the player just has hands and inventory, what's currently being placed, and that's about it. The player's not that complicated. Um, and then this function here is how you pick up things with space. This function's a bit much right now, but basically it just gets the closest item to you and adds it to your inventory if you can pick it up. And it checks if you have the correct tool in your hand to harvest it, which if I remember right, if it's harvestable, let me see where we do it. Um, we check if it has harvestable things have a tool required, which are set up in item somewhere down here where we convert it to um, the world items to is harvestable. We map, here we go, and say um, like twigs and grass don't need an, a tool, but a tree does need an ax. Uh, and I think that's actually pretty much the entire code base. This I just wanted to do a quick overview of where the game is and what the code looks like. Uh, if you want to contribute, I just started writing up a to-do list. You can also add things to the to-do list of anything I said in this video that I forgot. And we have some basic instructions of like how to add a new crafting recipe. It'd be nice to have more notes about how to add gameplay features without having to focus on the code. And yeah, this is just a a short 13 minute video meant to be very relaxed, but to show the progress on the project and, you know, give an overview of the code, make it a bit more approachable to people. And hopefully now you can follow us along in episode 10 of the live coding or contribute to the game yourself. And just to show off gameplay, I can pick up a twig and a stick, create an ax, click on it to put it in my hand, cut down some wood, grab some grass, click on a campfire, place the campfire. And that was the original idea for this game. And now it's just fun to see where it grows. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm gonna edit in my Patreons and thank you so much to my Patreons. And I, I hope this video, um, I don't know, added some value, serves as a historical documentation and I don't know, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great and wonderful day.